Hello everyone, this is Leo from the Monkeys Making Misplaced channel and today we are going to start a series it will be over the course of this week trying to get people uh, to understand how to play this game, how to build a deck, things like that. Um, so this will be the first part and for that we're going we're gonna to say that the first step is to choose a nation or a unit that you want to play. Right. And out of the choices, there's six main nations, which are Dragon Empire, Brant, Dark States, Thurkea, Keter Sanctuary, and Lyrical Monasteria. These nations constantly receive support. Right. They will receive support almost every set, guaranteed. Uh, the, the first five will. Lyrical Monasteria uh, receives its own support set, which is, is specifically for itself. Then after that, you have Dragon Tree. Uh, Dragon Tree is generic in the way that you can play any nation with it um, but it becomes that nation right so you could play uh, dragon tree with stoikea and it'd be stoikea dragon tree right so that is how uh, dragon tree is and then after that your last choices are to pick something from the three collaboration sets which have been record of ragnarok token rambu and shaman king Right, so we'll start with Dragon Empires. We'll we'll go through the units that you have access to, the units that you can pick that you would want to build a deck around, and you can use this to maybe look through, see all your choices. This video is recorded uh, right after Festival Collection, so uh, we will be soon entering DBT12. Uh, but you know, we didn't want to wait another month to do this because as the, uh, there will be new red lines in there, but. Uh, it better to get the, the the video out for people who want to get into it. That said, coming, they'll have some knowledge and they'll know what they're looking for. So to start off with Dragon Empire, we have the Nirvanas. This is the main character's unit. Uh, it uses the the art mechanic of overdress, and in the new the case of Nirvana Jiva, it uses cross overdress. These are very fun decks. This deck constantly receives support because it is the main character's deck. It's a very strong deck. I don't know if it is the best Dragon Empire deck currently, but we will, it, is, it will always receive support. So this, will, this wouldn't be a bad choice for someone who wants to constantly get new cards. Then we have Dragonic Overlord at the end. This is the encounter deck for Dragon Empire. It is a very strong deck in its own right. It, it has the ability to restand your Vanguard more than once. So it is a very strong deck, constantly putting out all the power. Uh, this is a, this is another choice. Then we have some other strong contenders. We have Gandiva, which I I feel a lot of people would say is the best Dragon Empire deck currently. Then we have Vasagra, who receives plenty of support and is receiving support in the future. Then we have Tamayura, which will be receiving support in set 11. Then we have some slightly less powerful options in Eugene and Shoto Doji. Both of these units are. Not as strong as the previous, but they are uh, constantly receiving support. Shojoji uses stealth cards, and those constantly are printed. And Eugene is a retired deck, which constantly you will receive. So these are two choices that you could play. They're very, uh, in my opinion, they're very fun. They're not as strong, but if you just like their vibe, well, there, there they are. And then we have two units who are on here, uh, essentially simply because they can be your vanguard. Uh, or your 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 main unit they probably won't be but i'll put them in here in case someone uh believes themselves to be a uh someone who wants to take the risk and build something with them and then next we're going into Brantgate. this is personally one of my favorite nations and for this we have the three strongest contenders right now in my opinion being alter ego messiah which is an encounter deck just like uh Dragonic Overlord was. Then we have Ava, who is a glitter deck like Tamayura, so she will be receiving support in set 11. And then we have Blitz CEO Welstra. All of these decks are very fun, very interesting. Alter Ego is one of the most recent additions to Brandgate. Uh, it, it has access to the G Zone, which is one of two decks currently able to do that. So any of these three would be good if you want to start competing. Then we have Orphis. He, you have his first form which doesn't really see a lot of play because it uh, was outclassed very quickly be by Orphis Regis, who uh, has competed at the, at the national level and at the world level. So it is certainly not a deck to ignore. It will also be receiving a special 
uh, starter deck sets coming up, so that that would be a good choice to to get it then. And then we have uh, the uh, battle princesses. They are involved with the prison units. They're very strong. With the addition of the new order from Festival Collection, makes this deck a little bit more consistent with getting the grade four that you need. So this is always a good a good choice. It also has a start deck, which I didn't mention for Nirvana, but Nirvana also has a start deck, although it doesn't really contain as many pieces as you would need. The Battle Princess one does at least contain Seraph Snow, the Prison, as long as some other cards that you might want to use. Then we have Archite, Gravidia, and Avantgarde. Do you like mechs? Do you like monsters? Do you like aliens? This nation has pretty much all of that. They're very good. Avantgarde is a mech that will be receiving support in set 12. Gravidia receives more support in set 12 as Gil. And Archite constantly receives support because she cares about cards with monster in the name. So uh, with how many cards in Brandgate are monsters or aliens, uh, she will constantly be receiving direct support. Then we have some of the lower end uh decks in Brandgate. We have the heroes, the the set order uh, monster, and then we have electromagnetic monster Ellie Hyrusaide, which is very complicated, but uh, he is in here because, again, he has a Vanguard ability, and he has received support in the Festival Collection. All of these decks aren't very strong, but if you just like their look, you know, they'll probably receive support in the future. But she doesn't really leave a deck to die uh, just completely outright. And then Dark States. So Dark States has two encounter decks, being Chrono Jet Dragon, which has access to the G-Zone, and Lucier, which, control, which uh, can create a board using your soul. Uh, both of those decks are very strong in my opinion. Chrono Jet Dragon... Just recently received a hit on the ban list, so it is not as effective as it was prior. But I don't think the, the hit really completely killed the deck outright. And then for lastly, we have Greedon, who will be receiving a mask form in set 11. Um, he is very popular for some people. One of the few cards that allow you to change the, the lose conditioning from losing at 6 damage to 7. So if you want to just live longer, he's your boy. And then we have Drejeweled. He has received three forms. The first one being his child deck form, the middle one being the one from the set, and he has also received the mask form. His ability allows you to put your opponent's vanguard's power to one, uh, it may essentially guaranteeing that you hit. And if uh, that seems like something that'd be fun for you, he's your boy. There's plenty of support for him out there. He's a he's a strong deck in my opinion. He he could compete with the best of them. Uh, then we have Bruce, another very good contender. Especially the new Diabolos Viamance Bruce, who is receiving a lot more support. All of these forms allow you to restand either one column or the front row or uh, all of your units, including himself. In the case of Grade 4, Bruce allows you to stand himself and the front row, so you get extra drive checks. Uh, but Final Rush and Final Burst are their gimmick. Very fun decks, very strong decks, in my opinion. Then we have Alma Jestar who has received the vase version and the mask version. She cares about binding critical triggers to get extra effects. Uh, I think the mask version is much better than the regular version, so if you were to build a deck, you'd probably want to go after the mask. And then some other mentions, we have Chaos, who is a glitter deck, so he'll be receiving set uh, support in set 11. Then we have Barrow Magnus, who it doesn't really have a specific thing, he just wants to have a lot of soul. So Dark States constantly gets cards like that, so it'll be perfect. He, he will get support always, and he's a very strong unit. And then we have the promo, Baffer Medes. Uh, he is a sort of low power card at the moment. He doesn't exactly have a lot of support. He doesn't have any direct support, really. Um, but if you're playing at a lower level, you want to play just something for fun. He is your boy. He cares about grade threes. In Dark State's not really a, a very supported thing at the moment, but in the future, Great Threes constantly get printed. He can keep using them. And then another two honorable uh, mentions being Arwing and Alter Slaughter. Arwing, again, for some reason, has a Vanguard skill, which seems interesting because 
it asked for you to be in Final Rush, but the only way you can be in Final Rush is by being on Bruce. Uh, but I added it in here. And Alter Slaughter, again, doesn't have any direct support, but you could build it, build into it because Dark States constantly uses uh, Soul or makes Soul, so it wouldn't be hard to play this card. Then we'll move on to Starkea, in which we have Zorga. Zorga also has three forms. Although, unlike uh, Drajuled, he has received his form in a main set every time. Um, original Zorga was very strong. Then we had Grave Zorga, who was also very strong. And then Zorga Masks is, in my opinion, a very strong deck as well. It gained access to uh, multi-attack, so uh, it became a much bigger uh, meta threat than it used to be prior. Uh, all of these would be good choices if you wanted to play Masks. You'd obviously have to use at least one copy of the uh, red or blue Zorga, whichever one you would prefer. But Zorga is a very, very fun deck. You gain access to the uh, to Alchem Magic, which is very fun. Allow you to play more than one order per turn, as long as you bind the second one from drop. So Zorga is fun. It's very, it's very unique in what it does. And then we have Flagberg and Roroa. Flagberg is, in my opinion, a very very strong deck. It can just get wins out of nowhere. Uh, has the, has a, a lot of units, a lot of support units for itself now. And then Roroa is able to get four attacks off at grade two. And then if you are going second, you get to gain access to five attacks, which is insane. It also receives support in set 11. Uh, and I think he is probably one of the, the better cards that are coming out of set 11 that, or his support is. So that's always a good choice if anyone would want to play something like that. It is a very fun deck in my opinion. Uh, I, I like all the glitter decks, but Roroa has been one of my, my favorites. And we have Magnolia. Magnolia will be receiving a mask form in set, uh, set 12. So there is that to look forward to. But currently Magnolia is in a very good place. It just recently received its promo that allows it to skip from grade 3 to grade 4 if you're going second, which is very good because you get to go to Magnolia Elder. This deck is all about multi-attacking. You can get 6 attacks in a turn, which is insane. They're all, they can all be very powerful. And Magnolia has been a strong deck. It's just that there's been so much rearguard hate, and I think that that might still be an issue for it moving forward. But if you can pressure the retire decks fast enough, then that becomes less of an issue if you can just kill them before you run out of resources. And then we have Leonorn. She is what we call the Mega Booster because she allows you to boost with three rear guards instead of just the one. Um, and when you do, she gains uh, different effects. Uh, I know her trial deck version gains a drive. Her uh, main deck or uh, main set version gained the drive and allowed you to restand two of the rearguards back up, as well as allowing you to draw a card and call something for a CB, which is pretty good. And then her mass versions allowed you to bring something back, as well as retiring something from your opponents. Uh, very fun deck, not as strong as some of the other ones we've already gone through, but it is fun nonetheless, and it will be receiving more support down the line. We I think we have some news for it in set. 13 so she will get another form so if you would be interested in playing Leonorn you might want to pick stuff up now then we have Maelstrom and Granfia both of these decks are a little bit on the lower end of the scale simply because I don't think they've received enough support to bring out the best in them I know Granfia is receiving support in set 11 or 12 and I remember Maelstrom has received a promo recently but I think both decks do need a little bit more support in the future. Obviously, we don't know all of set 12 yet, but maybe there will be some support for them in there. But both of these decks are uh, fun, in my opinion. And I've played Maelstrom and I've played against Granfia. Both are very fun decks. So they're still good choices in case you just love the vibe. I know Maelstrom is a encounter deck, so people really like him. And then three of the honorable mentions, these decks... Uh, cards have effects that only work on the Vanguard Circle. I know Shield Fisher received support in the Festival Collection. I think he received one card, which uh, at least is something, right? And then uh, Fabricate Dragon of Ruination, just on place, lets you play an order for free. 
and Iron Anchor Resentment Dragon is the only other way to gain Alka Magic outside of Zorga. Uh, out of these three, I would probably say Iron Anchor is, is the best choice, but you're more than welcome to play any of these decks. I know uh, people sometimes just like the challenge of playing something different. And then we're moving on to Keter. Keter, first off, we have Youthburg. Youthburg is a very strong deck. It has fallen off recently, but it will be receiving more support in set 13. So that is something to look forward to. I know that some people really like the look of the new Youthburg at the moment. But he is able to change his forms after he is done attacking. I think currently he has access to three different forms. Uh, one gains power and critical. One allows you to get extra drive checks. And then the other one allows you to draw two and remove units from your opponent's board. So uh, this deck is on the expensive side. That will be a, a thing I mentioned. It is a very expensive deck, but it is very fun. I've played against it and I've played, uh, I've played with it and it is a fun deck. It is just a little expensive. Then we have Bastion. Bastion is receiving a new form in set 12. Um, he is like Baphomedes in Dark States, but he, he his support has actually been very good, right? Baphomedes doesn't really hasn't really received much support, but Bastion has. We currently only have the Grade 3 and the Grade 4, and I know that at some point Bastion will be receiving a Great Skipper that allow him to jump from 3 to 4, if you're going second, like Magnolia would. Um, not much to say here. He allows you to restand. He gets power. He's overall a, a very consistent card. The issue with him is that you're playing a lot of grade threes, which means you don't have a lot of shield, which means you can die very quickly if you don't get any shield. Fun nonetheless. He also has a start deck. I don't think I mentioned it for Magnolia, but Magnolia as well has a start deck. Uh, not a lot of cards you can use from it, but hey, if you just want to try them out, they're very cheap currently. Then we have the encounter decks for Keter Sanctuary, being uh, Majesty Lord Blaster, who is his own deck. And then we have Phantom Blaster Dragon and Phantom Blaster Overload. Both of those cards are in a singular deck. They don't really play them individually, but all of these decks care about... Uh, Shadow Paladin or Royal Paladin. In Majesty Lord's Blaster's case, you play Blaster Blade and Blaster Dark to gain uh, extra effects. One of the few units that uh, can get to 15k uh, and sit on it, so it makes it a little bit more annoying for your opponents to hit it. Phantom Blaster Overlord gains a crit as long as Phantom Blaster Dragon is in your soul, which is uh, insane. Um, as well as being able to get a multi-attack off by pulling out a dark, a blaster dark from your soul and giving that unit and itself power. Uh, the, both of these are probably on the lower scale of, of uh, the meta, but they will receive support moving forward. Uh, so they're they're probably going to be able to compete just as well. I know both Majesty Lord Blaster and Phantom Blaster Overlord receive some very decent promos. So they could compete. Then we have Hexorb, Hexorb, Sorceress, Aquamarine, who just came out in set 10. Uh, Hexorb hasn't really ever made a splash. It is unfortunate, but I feel like they are afraid of the power of being able to stack your deck, which is something that Hexorb is able to do. So they, I feel like they are trying to only give her mild support because they fear that if they give her too much good support. Maybe she might be a little bit too strong. Stacking is always scary. You can never, you 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 know what is up there, but your opponent doesn't, and that that can sometimes be terrifying for them. But she is fun. She has a lot of support because she did uh, her original form came out in set one, and because Aquamarine is considered uh, the same as Hexorb, so the the support from set one to now still applies to her. The Greya, uh, one of my personal favorite glitter decks. It, uh, her whole motif is to change forms from light to dark, and each form has its own abilities. The light one being able to call rear guards, the dark one being able to retire them. The light one will restand a rear guard, the dark one will restand itself. You know, essentially they're they're almost identical, but they they each have their different forms. Right? It will receive uh, support in set 12, so look forward to that. Then we have 
a, another encounter deck in Minerva. Minerva is very, very strong. It just received the promo that is going to buff it up a little bit. Um, I haven't played much against it, so I can't say a lot about it, but I know that several people really enjoy her. And then we have Graham Grace and Sol Rayron. We did just profile both of these decks on the channel and did a, a gameplay of, uh, between them. So if you wanted to see more about them there, they, they those deck profiles and decks are all available. And then moving on to Lyrical Monasterio. Uh, I'm going to try to go a little bit faster because I realize I'm already at 20 minutes. So we have Willista and her new form. She cares about uh, specific orders that you put into Soul. Uh, very strong. I think it got a Pot of Greed-esque effect, uh, which is essentially a draw two. So that's very interesting. We have Kyrie. She is a trial deck for Lyrical Monasterio. Uh, she's able to return cards to your hand and then call stuff to them or call stuff to the to the rear guard so you're able to get multi attack off alessio she has a mechanic in which if the number of card or the grade of the cards bound is even or odds you will be on white wings or black wings and your units will get effects depending on them um, she also received a new form just recently in the festival collection felty rosa she cares about ghost units uh, she herself is not one, which is strange, because why wouldn't you make her a ghost? But it's too late for them to change it now. She also received a new form. She allows to, She's able to get extra drives and get multi-attack by calling the ghost that you drive check. I've played against this deck. It is very strong, and I haven't played against her new form, but I've got to assume it's just as good. Uh, Clarissa, this is a deck that I played personally. Love Clarissa. She is reminiscent of Brawlers from the old uh, era. Able to attack uh, three circles, and uh, your units get effects based on the number of times your vanguard hits. And since it can hit more than one rear guard or one more than one unit, you get multiple triggers of, of those effects to pop off. Laura, now she cares about song cards. Uh, haven't played much against her, but it's a cat girl. People like cat girls. All right, then we have some of the uh, more uh, individual decks that haven't received a, an upgrade. Luticia, currently probably the best Lyrical Monasterio deck. It's just a consistent deck. Petrolka is the Highlander uh, descendant from uh, V. She wants you to have different names, which is pretty easy. Lyrical has a lot of set. Mishu is the glitter deck for Lyrical Monasterio. Uh, she cares about cannonball orders. Uh, a very fun deck. I have this deck personally. It is strong, uh, but it does need support, and it, it did not receive much in the way of support in the festival collection, but she'll get more support later down the line. So for now, I'm okay with that. Then we have Erminia, who is the powerful mechanic. Then we have uh, Fortia, which is the friend mechanic. And then Kyoka, which is the magazine mechanic. All of these decks are pretty fun. They all have support. I know Erminia and, and Fortia ha have received at least one wave or two waves of support. Kyoka is only on her first one, but she's also very consistent. Then we have Hazret, Maidel, and Lilfa. Lilfa is a generic unit. Maidel cares about what's uh, on top of your deck, whether it's normal unit or trigger unit. And then Hazret is similar to Pale Moon or Spike Brothers in the way that the units that she has on Rearguard will go over to the bottom of the deck and draw you a card as soon as they're done attacking a Vanguard, which is pretty cool. Then we're going to move on to Dragon Tree, which is the generic one. This deck uh, can be played with any nation. It does have support for the five main ones. No support for Lyrical at the moment, but it does. It is the only unit that is grade 10. And it allows you to remove your over trigger from the main deck and put it in your right deck. Uh, it is a very complicated deck that I can't really go into, but it uses Dragon Tree Markers, which are just a permanent thing that stay on your board and give whatever units on them, plus five. So... Uh, it's a very interesting deck. I personally do have this one. I, I built Dragon Empire with it, uh, which I think is currently the best form, but we are receiving support for it, um, for it in every other nation. So maybe one day something else will be stronger. And then we have the collaboration sets. First off, Record of Ragnarok. Uh, we have the God, Thor, Zeus, Poseidon. Um, this deck has, or this collaboration set only has one set with it and one child deck, so there's not really a lot. But, you know, some people just like the anime, 
or the manga and they'll like to play it. I think all of these decks are pretty f cool. One of my buddies built Seuss and he absolutely kicked my ass when it came out. We haven't played, he hasn't played that deck since, but he always holds it over me. Then we have Brunhilde, who is, I think, believe the structure deck, and then she got a form in the set. And then we have Humanity, which is uh, Lubu, Adam, and Sasaki. Uh, again, I'm not really able to <laughs> tell you much about these decks because they're they're not very well known. I mean, you can even see that the pictures I was able to get all have sample on them, and th they were pulled from the site. So even Bushio kind of forgot about them, but uh, there's still a choice there. Not really strong, but hey, maybe it'll get a... A second set because I, I believe the anime has received another season, so you can always look forward to that support. And then we have Token Rambu. Token Rambu has five main units currently. It does only have one wave of support, and I believe it, it, it is. They're not very strong, unfortunately. Um, they were made almost near the beginning of Overdress, so their power level is very low. Because, you know, the game had just come out. Uh, but I do believe we have a second set coming out at some point. I don't know if the English side will receive it. But if you like Sword Boys, there they are. And then after this, we have Shaman King, which is actually one of the recent sets. Uh, we have Yo Asakura, who I think was the best Shaman King deck. Uh, I played against this deck specifically, I believe. Uh, it was very strong. It, I, I, I believe I almost lost, but I was playing the Grea. Um, it, 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 the, these decks are. This deck was very strong from what I can remember. But we have uh, Horo Horo, which again, um, you're gonna have to forgive me for this. I don't know uh, much about Shaman King. I wish I, I knew more about it. But a lot of these decks uh, weren't very strong. Were weren't very memorable. Uh, but there's still choices. Maybe it'll get another wave of support in the future. Uh, hard to tell you if they will or not. Can't even tell you who these people are. I know some of them are cool, but I can't really give you much to go off of. Um, this is kind of it. You know, here we go. So, what's your choice going to be, right? What What do you want to pick? I would pick something that you genuinely enjoy playing. Um, this video was a little longer than I wanted it to be, but I wanted to give you guys uh, every choice you currently have available. After this, probably part two, three, four, and five are going to be way shorter because they're just going to be explaining the game, not really going over units as much. Be a lot quicker, probably 10 minutes. This video is probably the chunkiest because it's showing you every unit and I'm trying to give you some commentary on them. I know it probably wasn't the greatest commentary, but... Uh, at least now you have all the choices on your plate. You can see whatever you can see all the things you you might want to play, whatever choices you want to play, whatever uh, strategies, right? Um, and then I will be uploading all of these decks or all of these uh, steps uh, throughout this following week, starting with step one on Monday and then finishing with step five on Friday. Uh, but with that, I have been Leo, and this has been. Uh, how to play Vanguard. Thank you for watching.